G'day, Stephen Carey from OffTheGridNose.com Not going to say the word again <laughs> Yeah, you thought I would but Never mind This video, a short video about batteries And I've, I'm sitting out in the shed, yeah, I'm sitting out nearly dark I've actually got a light on which is blue I'm going to turn the light up There you go Yeah, battery banks now, I constantly say we don't do um, what you would call generator runs. Got a bit of Backman Turner playing in the background. Yeah, you know, look around my shed, yeah, you've always seen that. Battery banks. I constantly say we don't do long generator runs, and we don't. But what you have to understand about these batteries, now, we've got AGMs. They're fairly standard issue, extra Telstra stuff. You may have lead acid, these are AGMs which are a matte battery, maintenance free. With battery banks, this gear up here, it actually determines what state your batteries are in. Now when you buy your batteries you go, yeah, they're, they're going to go, yeah, 10 year life cycle or you know, 10, 10, 15 year life or whatever the flaming elder mad ass salesman actually tell you. But what the bottom line is, is every time you cycle these, batteries have a cycle life. A cycle life just means that in most batteries case you might have you know, 1500 to 2000 cycles, sometimes more. And yeah, if you've got a lithium ion battery bank, don't freaking bother to you know, buy in. This is for the people who've got lead acid or AGMs. They have a limited amount of cycle. Now what a cycle is... A cycle is something that your inverter and your solar charger pretty much determines or will show you. I've got a little little gauge that I've showed before, the little controller. It's got a, a reading on it that says how low the batteries get. Now with AGM or lead acid, in basics, this is very basic alright, so all you techno wizards just go crawl under your rock. <laughs> I don't mean that literally, but a cycle is pretty much when you run your batteries down that low that they need to be recharged immediately. So you may, and you will get conflicting comments about this. Some people say you can run to 50%, some will say 65, 70, flame and L. It's all over the road like a mad woman shit. Pretty much, if you cycle your batteries down where Things like your controllers turn around and go, oh, you've got low battery, you have cycled your batteries down. That takes a cycle life off your batteries. Now, what I do with my little generator, and I don't know whether it will show up through my mess, not a bad afternoon, been a bit gloomy today, but i got a little right down there, I oh, know you can't see it, waste of time. i got several generators around here that I don't use except for things like welding and stuff. I got a 7 kVA Honda and I got a diesel generator out there that's a bit erratic. But what I wound up doing when I put this 3 kilowatt system in is most inverters they will require what's called a steady Hertz rate. Most inverters, the bigger inverters especially and even the small ones to some degree they require uh, a Hertz rating, which means the power that's put out of that generator is stable. Stable meaning it's not a, uh, a radic, my, my seven kilowatt Honda out there, it's like, uh, like I said, it's like a mad woman shit. It's, um, the rating on it goes up and down like a yo-yo, but it doesn't affect the genera the welder and stuff that I put on it. But if you're powering up sensitive equipment like your controllers and your inverter, you need to have a generator, preferably, that is compliant, meaning it'll run a constant sine wave compliant charge. It'll run a constant kilohertz rate so that things like sensitive equipment aren't affected by it. Now, what I do with our generator runs these days is little gauges like that little one over there I showed, that little one down there. When, I, the, when it gets down to about 75, I'll hit the generator for an hour or two. 
and this is the other thing with generators if you've got three kilowatt in our case which is which is the case um, three kilowatt this inverter has a built-in 80 amp hour 80 amp charger sorry now an 80 amp charger takes a fair amount of power to actually kick in so I, I actually went even though I've got the other generators there I went and bought a, a little 3.5 kilowatt Chinese thing but it's totally sign compliant runs a constant even kilowatt uh, kilohertz rating which means it doesn't screw around with your electrics it won't blow things up unless it goes west of course but it generally will be the best thing to to power this inverter up to charge the batteries up because if those batteries drop down to 50 percent and the equipment goes off on low voltage what you've done is you've used a cycle up. So when you look at your battery specs, they'll go, oh, how many cycles? Well, you've used a cycle up. Now, what I choose to do is do a quick battery run to bring the batteries back up. It might only take an hour or two. And it brings them up from that you know, 75 range to 95, nearly. In this case, I, I brought them up to just about float. And that's a good thing. It might have cost you five bucks to do it, but what it does do is it saves that million dollar battery bank from going under volt or down to a, a level that is considered to be a full discharge because that reduces the lifespan of the batteries. All right, so there's a simple video. Batteries and you can buy the batteries, you can buy the equipment, you can do all sorts of stuff and the salesman will tell you, yeah, you've got 15 years life cycle. But if you hammer those batteries and drop them down to 50, 60 percent every single day of the week because you just happen to be a power guzzler, well, you might want to think about putting a, a small generator on when and, and maybe a battery monitor on to stop those batteries going down so low because that will extend the life of those batteries considerably. And I mean hugely, hugely. I can't emphasize this enough. I don't care whether you've got lead acid bloody forklift batteries or whatever if you discharge them very deeply it uses a, a really large amount of the battery life up and that's what I try to avoid with our system today I did a two hour run brought the battery bank up to 98% which means this they didn't cycle even though the weather's been absolutely shitty they didn't cycle right down which didn't use a cycle life up they're sitting there happy as a pig and shit <laughs> on 98. So they don't know what I use today. We use the TV, the computers, all sorts of stuff today. They actually don't know I freaking did that because they're sitting there going, oh, we're at 98. So we didn't use a life cycle up. So those batteries will last longer if you keep them topped up. And this is topped up, all right? We, we have never on 3 kilowatt had to do a battery, run, a battery uh, sorry, a charge run because things have gone out, so to speak. If you run your batteries down to low volt and your equipment goes out on low volt, you are really hammering your batteries, all right? So I don't know what else to say. It's a very simple video. Doesn't matter what you got, whether you got just a simple truck battery or you know, something into a forklift or some ex Telstra ones like we got. If you hammer those batteries, you use up a life cycle. And you, you've you got to expect that those life cycles will get used up. It's a bit like paying bills and saving money. Chip, chip, chip. Every time you run those and hammer those batteries right down, you use up some of their life. So my advice is that little, I've got this little 3.5 kilowatt. It actually pushes an 80 amp charger, not too bad. It goes close to the limit for an 80 amp charger. And I know a lot of people are using car chargers and only put like 20 amps in. In that case, you can get away with a little putt-putt generator, a tiny little one. That 3.5 kilowatt, yeah, it's a flea bay item. I didn't go out and shell out another eight grand on a Honda like I got outside. But that Honda outside is not compliant and it doesn't maintain a very stable kilohertz rating which actually causes the equipment to balk 
and in this case this equipment is designed this is Victron equipment it's designed to actually stop a poor generator from causing an issue so what you wind up with is a, a seven kilowatt generator that's not compliant and not well not happy with the equipment well the equipment's not happy with the generator and what happens is this equipment actually winds back the power that's going in so you might think you run seven kilowatt into your battery charger but it's not the case you need a compliant generator even if it's only three kva and that'll put a nice solid clean wave into your equipment and charge at the maximum rate and like I said, in two hours, I've brought these batteries up from 75, which is quite okay. I could have run for another day or so on that. But I brought them up from 75 back up to nearly 100% in two hours. It cost me about five bucks. But what it did do is it will increase the battery life of those suckers down there, which cost, you got to sell your fucking, oh, I said it, shit. you got to sell your grandchildren to replace those things, all right? All right. Cheers from Steve, a quick battery charger, generator, what you would call, um, I don't know what you'd call it, figure it out for yourself, <laughs> it's a bloody chilly night, I'm going to sit back and go grab myself a distilled water, I've had enough today, but yeah, look after your batteries, this is the bottom line, don't run them till they're right down really low, it's just going to crucify them and reduce their life. You can run a, uh, two different people have a, that might have a 500 amp hour or 1000 amp hour battery bank. One person who keeps their batteries topped up will, will gain far more, far more years out of that battery bank than someone that hammers them right down to nearly nothing and sits there and sits around a fire in the evening and sings, sings Kumbaya and goes, I hope the sun comes out tomorrow. Well, that's too late because what you've done is you've hammered the battery bank down and used up one of its very few life cycles. Avoid that. Get yourself a little generator. Do a flea bay one, whatever. As long as it's compliant, runs a good wave, a good kilohertz, solid kilohertz rating. 50 hertz is about the, the, the rate that most good equipment will accept. And even the cheaper equipment really, really likes to have about a 50 hertz rate come in. Anything other than that, a generator that fluctuates up and down that is not controlled really well, is fine for heavy duty equipment, but it's not really, not really good for this sort of stuff, all right? So we'll call this batteries and battery maintenance. Let's cheers some Steve. Gary's inside. Got all the fires going. It's bloody chilly today. Shitty freaking day. I'm gonna go grab myself a distilled water and listen to a little bit more music. And we'll catch you on the next one. Look after your batteries. Look after your batteries. They will last a lot longer if you put a little bit of time and effort into monitoring them and maybe topping them up when they're, when they're not screaming out that they're collapsing, because I never run these batteries down below about 60%. And when I see that 60% on the battery monitor, I'll hit the little generator for an hour and I'll just bring it back up to avoid using up one of their few, you know, it might be 2,000 life cycles, but that, if you do the math, you know, 365 days in a year, well, it might only give you six years, but you could get 10 years out of it if you just throw a little bit of charge into them when they get down a little bit low, right? Avoid them running right down low. When you hammer a battery, it takes the, the years off them very quickly. Uh, cheers from Steve, cheers from Kerry by default inside, I'm out, subscribe and like if you want, bit of good information, people are very, um, and you see all too many posts, oh I don't know what to do with my system, I don't know what the battery, you know, the batteries are down, they're under volt, once your batteries go under volt, you have really caused them a problem, alright, you seriously have caused them a problem, they will come back, but their life cycle, their duty cycle for years, has been reduced horrendously, don't do that. Avoid that. Avoid that. Grab a battery monitor. Stick a multimeter on them. Do whatever you have to. Don't let them go under vault. Once you've done that, you've run them too low. You need to keep them topped up. Which means they haven't gone out and everything's inside. And the missus is running the blender and she's doing all sorts of shit. The hot water service is running. Everything's good. But if you hammer them down till they go under vault, you have used up one of their little lives, guys. 
like to see people avoid that. Cheers from me, cheers from Kerry, catch you on the next one. Do the right thing, which could be just patch a dog on the head. <laughs> anyway, I'm out, catch you guys.